What's up, legends? Welcome to my official podcast, Dave Austin Fishing. I hope you enjoy the show, which is brought to you by Eggiehead and Dave Austin Fishing Guides. Okay, so on today's podcast, I uh, thought we'd discuss uh, chasing Mulloway land-based in estuaries. <clears throat> so basically meaning rivers and bays and things like that, things of that nature. <clears throat> now, I kind of developed my reputation um, about six years ago on social media when it came to the Jewfish. Um and you know always had guys asking me you know to take them out with me and all that kind of stuff um i'm just trying to work out what the most simplest way is to sort of get the message across to everybody uh for those especially those that um are still trying to catch their first jewfish and their first mulloway uh out of sydney all sydney sort of uh, areas and waterways so <clears throat> Basically, we'll talk land-based. Um, if we need to discuss beaches and boats, we'll, we'll do that in another podcast. Um, but let's just look at the guys that can't afford boats. Uh, let's focus on them today. And uh, look, I've been chasing Jewfish since 1998. And um, back then, uh, that's basically how I learned how to catch squid. We used to catch, we started chasing Southern Calamari with squid jigs. Um, back then we were, we were some of the first ones doing it um where we'd sort of go and um catch the squid and use them for fresh bait because one of the secrets to mulloway uh is that fresh bait my opinion on that however seems to be changing on that uh, but we'll get into what we'll get into that a little bit later um but yeah so <clears throat> so what we'll talk about is okay so chasing your mulloway out of sydney you know, everybody wants to know that secret spot, and and this is the, this is one of the reasons why I don't mention locations these days. Um, there's no secret locations in Sydney land-based. Uh, bottom line, um, you know, if there is and you've and you've managed to hide it from everybody else, um, it's basically a unicorn, in my opinion. Um, and having said that, your, your usual sort of haunts. Uh, for Mulloway locations, land-based, um, they can be found everywhere. So let's just try to keep this simple. I want to try to focus. I, I want to try to focus on that bloke that's never caught a Jewfish. He's gone a hundred times. He never gets anything. He spends his whole night, wastes his money on buying squid that the tackle shops are selling fresh and that you see all over Facebook, you know, for sale. And they're paying 30, 40 bucks a kilo blah 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 <clears throat> this is for you guys okay so this is what you're going to do and listen very very closely uh, because there is a way to target them the right way and there is a way to target them the wrong way um, I'm pretty sure by now if you've had a few cracks at it you know about all the rigs and all that sort of stuff um, you know a lot of guys use two hooks I don't use two hooks okay I don't use a, a double snell uh, setup. I basically use a single hook, usually a 7-0 or an 8-0, sometimes even a 9-0 circle hook in a Gamagatsu or an Ona. <clears throat> and what you, um, having said that, the guys that use two hooks don't catch double the amount of fish. And you'd be foolish to believe that those guys using a double hook rig are missing fish, okay? Now, for someone like me who's caught a lot of fish, I'm happy to miss the odd run here and there. That doesn't bother me. I've caught plenty of, of Mulloway over the years, but you guys haven't. So if you guys feel the need to use a double hook rig, by all means, feel free to use it. I don't actually think it increases your chances. Um, I think, you know, I think you're better off using a single circle hook um, that's just the way that I do it. But having said that, if you want to use a double snell uh, at the end of your trace or a sliding snell, two hooks, by all means go for it. If you're, if you're a newbie and you're trying to get um, your head around things and you feel more confident, by all means go for it. You still do catch fish on those hooks, 
but don't think that you're going to catch every single fish just because you're using two hooks and don't think you're going to catch double the amount and don't think you're going to get twice as many hookups okay because that's completely wrong okay and basically you know if you're an experienced guy and you're using two hooks um, and you're always taking home fish there's not really much point so um, you know especially if you've got a freezer full um, you know I, I just think that um, just got to be sensible about things especially if you catch an undersized fish and you need to let it go and it's and it's got one of those hooks down its gob um, or down its throat well then you know that sort of defeats the purpose and so for those that don't know uh, legal size for Mulloway in New South Wales is 70 centimeters one per person uh, is the bag limit that was introduced I think last year they seem to think or the DPI seems to think that that these fish are endangered I don't believe that uh, I don't believe that they are endangered uh, because the last few years I've been catching more than ever and I haven't done anything different okay all right so let's go and start talking about what you're basically going to do now some guys are going to be fishing George's River Botany Bay other guys Parramatta, Parramatta River Sydney Harbour the wharfs all those sort of wharfs any sort of land-based location um, if you look on my YouTube channel, Dave Austin Fishing, uh, I'm pretty sure if you go through the videos there, there's a video of us uh, chasing, of me and a bloke chasing um, jewies during the day on um, using micro jigs. And you see a couple caught in that video. Um, and that's down a foreshore road, um, just off the rocks there. Now that place has got to be the worst kept secret and the amount of times people have sent me a message on Facebook saying where, where, where's there a good Jewfish spot and I send them there and they don't catch nothing, they come back and they say give us one of your good spots. Well, full disclosure, that's one of my good spots. Now I don't generally tend to fish there um, when there's a lot of people around. It's just the way that I do things. I don't record too many videos down there. Um, I feel a bit silly talking to the camera when there's other people around uh, so that's why I haven't got many videos out there um, that's just one sort of a short clip um, that, that video that we've got up on that channel is a, is a short clip so yeah look up on YouTube Dave Austin Fishing and scroll through those videos and you'll see the one of us chasing mulloways on jigs um, look a lot of fish have been caught at that place off the rocks there um, you've got to get a good cast out we've caught them off the end casting towards the third runway and we've caught them casting towards the ports. So let's just use that place as an example. Uh, if, you don't, if you're if you not from the area and you need to do somewhere else, let's just use that as an example for now. So land-based Mulloway, okay, for those that are just joining in. What you need to do is you need to sort of make a plan of being able to fish five days in a row after December 1st, okay? So we're talking summer, okay? At the moment, the water's still a little bit cold. There's a few jewies getting around, but they're pretty thin. So today's date's November the 2nd, and I'm just gonna say, aim for December onwards, through summer. You're gonna fish one spot, five days in a row, for five hours. You're gonna have all your bait ready to go as soon as you, you're there, and you're gonna keep your baits in the water you're gonna fish the same time five days in a row. So if you're working and you finish at three or something or 3.30, you're gonna start fishing from five o'clock till 10 o'clock. And you're gonna do that from Monday right through to Friday and you're not going to change locations, okay? If you can fish rain, hail or shine, just do it, okay? There's a reason why the same guys keep posting a lot of Jewfish catches on, on social media and that's because they're always out there doing it, okay? You're not gonna be able to compete by even catching one if you go out once every two weeks or three weeks. And the biggest mistake most guys make that I know, most guys make that I always hear about is they'll go to one spot, they'll be there for, they'll be there all night, they won't catch one, and then the following night, you know, it might be the weekend, they start on the Friday, the following night's a Saturday, they go to a different spot because they think this spot's shit and there's no fish there. 
All you need to do is fish a spot where you have seen with your own eyes that a mulloway has been pulled in and landed. Not something that you heard from someone else, not someone telling you to go to this place or that place. You must have seen it with your own eyes where someone pulled in a jewfish at that particular location. And that's the location that you're gonna stick with. And you're gonna fish it for five hours, five days in a row, from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Don't even look at the tides, okay? Don't look at the moon phases. Don't look at the weather, okay? Obviously, keep, keep it safe. Um, and just do that at the same location five days in a row. Now, make sure you're doing that in summer when you know the fish are around, okay? So basically, if you don't know if there's been fish around or not, that's why I said start in December. They usually start to show up when, it, when they, they start to show up in numbers as it gets warmer. At the moment, um, there's a lot of cold water sitting off, um, off, off our shores outside. Um, so there are a few fish getting around, but they're few and far between. So look, you can try this now. Um, it might deliver, uh, but I suggest waiting, um, waiting, getting your baits together, and you know, getting your baits ready, separate them, and do what you need to do. All right. So that's as far as locations go. All you got to do is fish a place where you know they've been caught before. If they've been caught there once, they'll be swimming past there again. A lot of people um, think that jewfish are a lazy fish, that they seem to just uh, sit in one spot and not move around. That that's absolute garbage. Um, they they move around. Okay, they might they might stop for a half an hour here or there, you know, around a bridge pond or something. But um, don't think that. Uh, on a land-based location, if you're fishing like a like a break wall or something um, on a river, that they're just going to be sitting underneath your bait. Um, you basically got to put your bait out there, and you got to hope that as they're swimming past, um, your bait gets sort of intercepted and picked up, and and you get that run on the end of your rod. Okay, so that's that's as far as location goes. That's what you need to know. You just need to know that someone has fished in that one spot. And you've seen with your own eyes that someone's caught a fish there. That's that's basically that's half the battle. All right. So as far as locations go, do that. Uh, we'll move on now to um, let's move on to baits and what baits you want to be using. Um, I'm just thinking if we should switch over to. Now you know what we'll stick with baits for now. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to chase yellowtail. Um, yellowtail number one, okay, and I, and I say that because squid out of Sydney sometimes seem to be very, very hard if you're catching your own bait. You can't buy your squid or you can't catch your squid. Um, squid will freeze very well, so before you target your five days, five hours, five day, same location sort of method, try to, um, try to get your bait sorted out before you aim to do that. Um, you will generally need two rods, so you'd want to probably have at least 15 baits, 15 baits or so, okay? Um, so if you want to catch your live yellowtail, you can usually catch them at a lot of these wharves, um, the same location that you're actually fishing. So that's, that's one way to, um, that's one way to do it, and you can keep them alive. You can use an aerator. If you're using an aerator, you've got to keep changing the water every half an hour or so. Um, or you can buy those buckets, which is what I've got, that have got like a net inside them. And when you sh when you shut the net up, the, the net off, you can um, it's like a, it's like a basket that sits inside the bucket, and that basket sits in the in the water, so you don't have to keep changing your water. It also makes it easy to get your bait out um, as you lift it up. All the water drains out and you can put your live yellow tail on, on your hook or on your two hook rig if you need to you if, if if you need to go go down that path okay um so that's your yellow tail get your squid when you when you buy your squid or if you catch your squid you want to get enough squid that you're going to get 15 or so strips of uh long strips and the head so you want to have about 15 baits. You need 15 baits for the whole night. So divide it up. It's, it's good to have a bit of a mix of yellowtail, um, squid, 
and sometimes tailor as well. Just make sure the tailor are legal. They have to be 30 centimeters or so. You can get in trouble uh, with a fine if, if you if you keep them smaller. Even if you're using them for live bait, you're not allowed. So um, what you do with your yellow tail, if you're not using them live, you can fillet them. Some guys like to butterfly them. I don't like to butterfly them. Um, but you just want to, you can get three baits out of um, out of a decent sized yellow tail. You get a fillet off each side and you get the head. The head of a yellow tail and tail are one of my favorite baits. And I've caught a lot of jewfish on them. Um, there's actually one on my YouTube channel where I'm pretty sure both videos on the beach where I've caught Mulloway, on both of those videos, I'm pretty sure they were yellow tail or tailor heads. So uh, check out my YouTube channel for that. And um, you can see that in action that it actually works. A lot of, I've seen guys just throw their heads away. I think that was sort of what a waste. Um, but anyway, so yellow tail, tailor, uh, squid. Um, tailor doesn't freeze well. Yellow tail freezes better than, than the tailor. Squid freezes very well. Okay, fresh, fresh versus, or let's go live versus fresh versus old bait, okay? I think where possible, and if you can fish where you don't have to cast too far, I think live baits definitely, you have to have a live bait out there. You want to be fishing with two rods. So you want to have one live bait out there, live yellow tail, and, another, and the squid strip on the other one. And um, if you get a run on the live yellow tail, well then you plonk a live yellow tail on the other one. Um, you'll sometimes find I'll just prefer one or the other and sometimes I'll just be hitting both. It's the same with squid and squid jigs. Quite often, quite often they can be fixated on one colour and other times they can um, they can just smash anything that's in front of them. So it's a good idea to mix them up. I have seen Mulloway prefer dead baits over live baits. So don't think that live bait's always the best way. It's a great way, but it's not always the way, okay? But I usually put that live bait out first. Um, a couple of years back, uh, when I was chasing these um, these Jewies lamb-based, what I actually found was I, was I was always using live baits, usually yellow tail or big tailor, 30 centimeter tailor, um, sometimes 35 centimeter tailor. If I can, if I can get them like, into the area like where I think the Mulloway are gonna swim past, I'll drop a 35 centimeter live, live tailor out there without even thinking twice because I want that big fish. Okay, and don't think you need to use those little yellow tail. Don't be scared to use a big bait because, you know, even a small Jewy can, can smash a 35 centimeter yellow tail. Um, you know, even an undersized one, they've got a very, very big mouth. Um, but you want that bigger bait out there in case those big boys tend to swim past. Um, but this, uh, this season, two years, I think it was about two years ago, where I was using, um, where I was using like live yellow tail and stuff, for ages I was getting, you know, um, you know, you anything between 70 and 90 centimeter sort of jewies pretty much every time I went. I had a crack a season, I caught over 100 um, that season. Um, and there was one day where I couldn't get any, um, I couldn't get any bait, it was just too windy and I didn't have time to go stuffing around, so I ended up going to um, a seafood shop, <laughs> and um, they had these yellow tail there, and they looked really, really bad. They they didn't look edible, that's for sure. Uh, the eyes, the eyes around the pupil were like red, and you could just see that they, they were very, very old baits, and they smelled. They, they had a real bad smell about them. Um, but I bought them as I was using for bait. They had nothing else, and I thought, okay, well they're cheap enough, so I bought them. And I, I plonked out one of them whole, obviously dead, probably been frozen a hundred times. But um, and you know, and I caught the biggest one of that season that that first time I used that, um, I used that bait and um, that that dead yellow tail. And I thought that's quite weird because all I've been lately getting is you know 90s up to the 90s, 92s, um, a lot of 70s and 80s. And this one here, here I come in with a random old bait with a 110 centimeter fish. I think the video of that one is uh, on my YouTube channel as well. I'm holding it at the cleaning table at Foreshore Road there. Um, you know, so I, that, this sort of perked my interest a little bit. So the following day I went out again and 
I bought the same Milo Town. I just wanted to prove, um, <laughs> I just wanted to prove to myself that it, that it was just a fluke. And I, I kid you not, I got some more of those Yellow Town. They're still old. Um, they're, they're probably a day older than the ones that I bought the day before. And yeah, and I caught a 105 centimetre one. So, you know, the live Yellow Town were getting a lot of the smaller ones, 70s and 80s and all that, occasional 90s. And then these old baits were getting those those bigger ones. Not monster fish, but good size, good size mulloway for Botany Bay. So, you know, don't um don't knock the old bait if you've got nothing else to use. But if you want to get those 70s and 80s, then live your tail. I don't think there's a Jewfish out there that'll that'll swim past them. But I have I have seen them prefer a, a strip of squid over um a live your tail as well. So um stick with that for now anyway. In our waters for Sydney, Botany Bay, uh, George River, Parramatta River. Uh, Yellowtail and Squid and Taylor focus on those baits for us. Um, they seem to be pretty consistent. So that that's your baits. Okay, um, let's talk about your rigs. Uh, when it comes to rigs, you got to just keep everything simple. Um, with any sort of fishing, just keep it all simple. What you'll get is um, hang on a sec. Give us a second. Yeah, when it comes to your rigs, what you want to um, what do you want to aim for is um, so we'll go with the rods, okay? So land based, you want to get yourself a pen prevail. I prefer the the first editions um, in the 12 foot, eight to 12 kilo, two piece. Um, I find them to be a good all round rod, and I just put a nice big reel on it that can hold a lot of line. Um, and I pretty much use that for my beach fishing, my land based fishing. Um, yeah, and I just put heavy line on it. I think I've got this Berkeley, um, I've got this Berkeley line on there that's like 50 pound. I get enough distance for it, uh, with it. Um, I've got a Pen Conflict 8000 reel, and I've got another Spin Fisher, um, a Lifeliner as well, like a, one of the, the bigger sides you can get in that. I think it's a 10,500. Um, the Pen reels are very heavy though. Um, obviously, you don't need to go that big, uh, but that, that's what I tend to use because I use those rods for my beach fishing as well. And sometimes we lock into some some giant sharks and stuff, and I don't want to lose all my line and stuff. So, um, but yeah, anyway, that's that, that's what I do with um, that's what I use land base. So you can use them off your wharfs, off your break walls that are around the estuaries and your rivers, um, anything like that. You can get you can get some distance. Um, what I, the way I set my rig up, I, um, you can use a ball sinker if there's not a lot of current. If there's current, you can use an easy clip with a star sinker. Doesn't really matter. You can use a star sinker if you want over the ball sinker, even if there's no current. Um, use a swivel. I use um, anything from sort of 60 pound to 80 pound Jinkai um, fluorocarbon. I find that to be a good line. Jewies aren't line shy. Um, you can, and then you, put, then I use an 80, 7080 or a 90 circle hook. Doesn't really matter. I'll come back to the point about the, the the twin hook rigs. If you haven't caught a lot of fish and you feel more comfortable using that, you can. Um, I don't like using J hooks because I find a lot of the time they, the jewies will swallow those hooks, and and I sometimes let. 80 and 90 centimetre fish go. Quite often I do let them go when I've got enough fish in the like freezer and all that. Um, I don't want to be letting them go with a hook down their gobs. Um, but they do survive. They, they, they can survive like that, but obviously a circle hook usually gets in the side of the mouth. Um, so that's why I always opt for the single circle hook. Um, when you're using, if you're using a live yellow tail, you want to pin, you want to pin that fish through the bottom of underneath the mouth, so through the bottom of the jaw, out through a tough area around the nostrils, okay? And you wanna have plenty of hook exposed, okay? Make sure you've got that, that hook exposed. So whether you're using a J hook or a circle hook, just make sure that the point of the hook's showing as well. Um, 
if you're using a squid strip, just cut them in nice, aerodynamic type of lengths and only pin it through once, okay? Don't go pinning it through two and three times and whatever else. Um, just pin it through once and it should be fine. Um, with a tailor fillet or a yellow tail fillet, just uh, you'll sort of find when you when you fill it a yellow tail, it comes out like a elongated triangle. Hook it through the uh, through the tail end of the fillet and um, and just pin it through once. Make sure there's plenty of hook hook showing as well. And um, and then you can if you're using the twin hook rig, um, you'd you'd leave the bottom hook exposed. Um, some guys like to pin it through twice. Look, at the end of the day, um, if there's small fish around picking at your bait, it's pretty hard, uh, unless you've got some decent sized brim around the area. Um, sorry, I'm just getting let off the road. Um, just a sec. Yeah, so if you've got some decent sized brim around the area, they're, they're usually the only thing that can pick up, pick those baits off the hook. Um, but having said that, you know, if you've got, a, if you've got those little undersized snapper picking at your bait, um, you know, all it's doing is creating vibrations in the water and, uh, and it's more than likely going to attract mulloway if they're in the area um, closer to your bait. Uh, I, I very rarely lose baits just by pinning them once. I've seen a lot of guys put them, put them through, you know, two or three times and all that that does is um, cause your bait to spin. If your bait's going to be spinning in a current, um, that's where you're going to start getting your, your tangles. And then that's where you start getting your knots and then you're in all sorts of trouble sort of chasing your, you know, trying to sort out your jewfish. Um, sorry, trying to sort out your tangles um, in the dark. Okay? So that's about it. I, I, I hope that helps a few of you guys. And, um, you know, if, if you guys try this uh, method, um, just a sec, what's going on here? I'm driving while I'm recording this and... Uh, <laughs> And yeah, so you might you may hear that background noise. So um, yeah, guys, give it a crack. Just remember, five hours from five o'clock to ten o'clock, Monday to Friday. I say Monday to Friday because you'll get you'll get um, less people around. Um, what else can I say? Yeah, fish till ten o'clock. Pack up and go home at ten o'clock, and then do it the following night. And do it after, do it during December. Or do it as soon as you hear someone catch a mulloway at that location or if you see it caught. Don't believe, oh, and I, just another tip, usually when it comes to fishing, if someone gives away a location or mentions a location on Facebook, you can pretty much guarantee that they're lying. Um, no one tends to give their locations away um, just like that if they know what they're doing. So um, hopefully that helps you guys. Um, as I said, don't worry about the tides, air pressure, moon phases. Don't, don't worry about all that stuff. Fish have to eat, okay? Uh, <laughs> and they'll probably and they probably two or three times through the course of a 24-hour period. So um, they don't always eat. They can sometimes. Sw- I've seen them swim over my baits without touching them. Like a whole school of them swim over it, and um, you know that does happen. But if you're going to get in the most easiest way and you do it in a disciplined approach. That's how you'll get your first one. Okay, so that wraps up part one of land-based Mulloway Jewfish out of uh, the Sydney sort of region, out of the estuaries and rivers and all that sort of stuff. Um, be sure to tune into our next podcast. So make sure you're following us on Spotify. Uh, we will be getting this up on Apple Podcasts as well. Um, but our next show will be uh, continuing and we'll be talking to uh, a good mate of mine, Abs Mishlawi. Uh He's number three in my top three of our uh, favorite Jew fishermen. <laughs> but what we'll do with him is uh, we'll basically have a phone conversation with him and we'll get his opinion um, and what he thinks the best way that, that newbies should be approaching uh, the subject and the topic and the hunt for what is the ghost of the rivers, the mighty Mulloway. Tight lines, ladies and gents.